music indicates. <laughs> it's time once again for another visit from the NBC Bookmobile, ladies and gentlemen. Here they are. It's the library lady. The NBC Bookmobile and NBC's library lady, the lovely Miss Kathleen Anchors. Kathleen, nice to... Now, uh, Kathleen, I, I, uh, I heard some unpleasant rumors that the Bookmobile is having a little trouble. Is that, is that possible? Oh, I'm afraid so, David. Oh, no. It seems that young people prefer watching noisy rock videos to reading. Oh, brother, that really, that really is a shame. But fortunately, things have improved. Uh-huh thanks to a new program instituted by gruff but lovable Gus. He got, he got the idea from the documentary Scared Straight. Oh, Scared Straight. That's where hardened, convicted uh, criminals uh, uh, to try to scare juvenile delinquents by telling them horror stories about prison conditions. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So now what Gus does is stand outside the library, uh -huh. his breath reeking of liquor, right. and bully and threaten the children until, fearing for their lives, they desperately run inside for protection. Oh, my. It's better than a circus. Better than a circus. Well, so uh, in other words, uh, Gus is actually scaring the kids straight into the library. Very well put, David. <laughs> That's right. Okay, well, let's get to the, uh, some of the new publications you have for us tonight, mm -hmm. uh, library lady. And I know, as always, some wonderful items on the shelf here. Oh, this is a good one. I, I might purchase this myself. Uh, Howard Cosell's I Never Played the Game, of course, has inspired a certain amount of hatred from his former colleagues, one of whom has not wasted any time in returning fire. It's called Frank Gifford's Howard, You Insufferable Bastard. <laughs> By the way, this is a, a real collector's issue. This is not Frank Gifford, this is Chad Everett. So, if you want to pick this one up, it's going to be quite valuable in the years to come. Oh, here's another nice one. Boy, and the holidays are right around the corner, so what better way to celebrate by mm -hmm. giving this lovely gift here? Uh, here's the story of two friends, a borrowed convertible and a 3,000-mile auto trip across America. It's called On the Road with Klaus von Bülow and Tom Carvel. It's a, it's a lovely... I think that's Tom driving. I think it is. Yeah, I think I so. Think so. Okay. Well, you know, in these troubled times, everybody should own at least one self-defense manual, and here's the one I recommend. It's called Harry Reasoner's Lights Out, Punk. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, here's the latest book by that irrepressible participatory journalist, George Plimpton. It's called Open Casket. <laughs> Uh, How-to books by famous athletes have long been mainstays of the bestseller list, and few sports enthusiasts will be able to resist the invitation to go balling with Manute. Manute, Manute ball. Have you looked through that at all? I looked at it yeah. very briefly. Very briefly. So you wouldn't recommend that necessarily as a... Um, not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that vote of confidence. <laughs> you know, with the growth of lotteries in this country, everybody's trying to make a quick book. That explains this new publication, slapped together by the phone company, New York Bell's Treasury of Lottery Numbers. <laughs> Oh, I like this one. You know, books on uh, feminism and women's issues are always of interest, and, and here's one with a fresh perspective. It's called Woman's Be Thinking Too Much by Ike Turner. What a horrible thing to say. <clears throat> and finally, how are we doing on time? We got time for this one? Two minutes? Well, this won't take two minutes. What'll we do with the extra minute? It'll be a bonus minute for the viewers. All right. 
Uh, you know, Ann Landers seems to have uh, had a change of heart when it comes to advice for teens with this brand new volume. It's called Make New Friends by Going All the Way. Okay, thank you very much, uh, library lady. Thank you, guests. Nice to see you again. Drive safely. Okay, we got a, a great show. There it goes. Careful. in show business. He is featured in an interview in the new issue of Playboy magazine right here and he can be seen in person on November 27th at the Community Center Theater in Sacramento. Please say hello to Jay Leno. <laughs> Very impressive the interview there in Playboy now, magazine. I remember now you did the Playboy interview about a year ago, two years ago. A year ago, I noticed when you did it, they just uh, I guess they had a small black and white picture. Where I noticed for myself, there's a rather large uh, color oh, shot. A large, large color picture, is it? Well, show show them the picture. Well, I don't. I'm not the kind of guy to brag, yeah, right. certainly. But I guess <laughs> I guess they decide who gets the big picture. Yeah, and yeah. I suppose that's uh, actually my true. favorite issue is uh, the December wish issue. Why is that? The one that has all those fabulous Playboy bachelor gift items. Yeah. You know, like the, you know, the three-foot chrome shoehorn made by Swank. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? You know, when I was 19 years old, a freshman year in college, I sent away. I actually sent away 14.95 for the Playboy electric swizzle stick. Yeah. You know, this thing, a little black handle Playboy emblem, two D-sized batteries. Put it in a woman drink, frame, mix it. In <laughs> I mean, I figured women would be real impressed with this. You know, I figured I'd walk into parties, girls would go. What's that, a Playboy social stick? All right. <laughs> oh, my. So, uh, how you been? What else is going on? You been watching the news? Yeah, here? I've been the watching the news. We'll probably be late tonight because of this pinhead summit thing going on. <laughs> oh, no. You can't. It's not pinhead. Oh, it's it's you the know future what it is? of it's the, the world. Future. Look at, look at the, the Russian guy. They send a guy. He looks like somebody hit him with a tomato. He's got that red thing. Huh? Our guy has got stuff on his nose. Are these the best looking uh. people we can send to this summit? <laughs> Prince Charles and Lady Diana finally went home. <laughs> Cover a time, cover a newsweek. Are there any inbred people in our own country we can read about? <laughs> come on, oh, come on. What is yeah, they're over here. They're over here hawking stuff for J.C. Penny. I'm sure this means Kmart and Woolworths are going to be packed with royalty now. You know? <laughs> Every low ball store in America is going to be traveling through Europe trying to find anybody with some tenuous bloodline they can catch up with. <laughs> in fact, Crazy Eddie's right here in New York. They just hired King Olaf of Sweden. They got him out front there. Check it out, yeah, check it out. <laughs> in fact, I just heard uh, on the radio, J.C. Penny says that the English look will yeah. be all the rage oh, for that's young men nice. Yeah, yeah. I guess big ears and bad teeth never seem to go out. Uh, so what else is going on? You've been uh, working? You, yeah, you, the you world have... of TV. Yeah, I know you're a big TV oh, fan. You know. Well, you mentioned it earlier. They brought back the newlywed game. Yeah. And they brought back... Very successful, uh, I guess. Brought back, well, there's a reason for this. They brought back that and the dating game. You see, although the literacy rate in this country is low, the networks are worried that it's not quite low enough. <laughs> So, by bringing back shows like The Dating Game, what they hope to do is mate genetically inferior people <laughs> in the realization that they will reproduce mutant offspring, <laughs> thus ensuring the next generation of contestants for uh -huh. these games. There you go. Yeah. 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 In fact, it's, uh, it's all... Uh, it's all in a new book. It's in a new book called Frontiers of Science by Bob Eubanks and Dr. <laughs> William Shockley. Uh, and they explain the typical game show uh -huh. contestant. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've seen them. One pupil is usually bigger than the other, and it <laughs> tends to throb rhythmically according to the number of prizes that are given. <laughs> Anything else in the, the oh, guide there that well, you want to comment on? Well, the usual on? stuff. Of, you know, every time I come on this show, I find here's another, I don't have to say it, there's another evil twin episode yeah. last week. Will Crystal be raped while Blake sleeps with her double? I mean, 
I mean, if you were being attacked, would that be the first thing on your mind? <laughs> you know what I like about... You know, obviously, this is Sweeps Week. I mean, everybody that's knows right. that. That's right. That's why we're having fig races. That's right. You yeah. have the big yes on... <laughs> this, is the local, uh, this is the local TV guy from L.A. Look at this one. Mark Trank on the 9 o'clock news in L.A. Porn video. Okay, now here's a shot. <laughs> Mark here. Trank? Mark Trank. Now, a couple of pages later, here's Mark <laughs> Trank again, back with more explicit sex video. <laughs> on the, uh, that's on the 9 o'clock news. And he's got another one here, tintillating television with Mark Trank. Takes yeah, another look. Yeah. But they do this. You ever notice when you watch the news when it's not sweet week, it's always like the life of the American farmer living in a deficit economy. As soon as it's sweet week, suddenly it becomes, Boom. oops, Strip searches at teenage girls' Catholic schools. Are they a phenomenon? You know, and then they... <laughs> How about you? Are you uh, doing any television? You ever, I've ever read got any auditions for I've stuff? I've read for a few shows. You know, since Moonlighting and Scarecrow and Mrs. King, they've started a lot of these adventure kind of comedy shows. Oh, I read for one for ABC called Gag Street. Gag Street. Yeah, in it. I play a young comic named Johnny Gag Street, whose parents, <laughs> whose parents were killed by hecklers. <laughs> and he vows, he vows to use his comedy to fight crime in the sin palaces of Las Vegas. So it's kind of a, and it's got the comedy and the action adventure kind of thing. You know. yeah. and, and you play Johnny Gag Johnny Street. Johnny Gag Street. Yeah. Right. That's, well, that's hence the title, Gag Street. Yeah. I, I hope that works out for you. Uh, again, we got our fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. Well, good for you. Well, we'll do a commercial here, and then uh, we'll be back with uh, our friend Jay. Okay, Jay Leno is here and uh, Edward Woodward from The Equalizer is here and we have the uh, pig races with a woman from Ohio named Judy Herb Kersman. Which I think is a great name. Uh, fabulous. No, it's fabulous. a good name, Herb Kersman. Well, I hope she just didn't change it when she got into pig racing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, where were we? What were we talking about? News? What's your, what are we... No, uh, we're talking about... You, well, I, audition on television shows? We talked about that already, but I... What do we see coming in on the plane this morning? Oh, uh... Oh, no, no. James Bond, View to a Kill. Oh. Come on, what's Roger Moore, 71 now, this guy? <laughs> I know they're looking for a younger, hipper Bond, Buddy Epson, very close to the world. <laughs> I mean, do women still buy this? Come on, I mean, how come, do men really feel they need a uh, fur -lined iceberg that's really a secret submarine to invent? <laughs> I mean, kind of dated. We're, oh, going back, I'm going back tonight, and... Oh, Rambo again. I saw yeah. it the last time. I still haven't seen it. You haven't seen no, it? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, my favorite line in the film is when Stallone says, or rather, Rambo says, you know, it's funny, when you see acting that good, you tend to think the character yeah. is the person. Yeah. 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 It's seamless. Yeah, yeah, yeah you it's tend invisible. to think it's one sure. and the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's where Rambo says, the mind is the most dangerous weapon. Is that right, Rambo? Well, you better take a couple of these rocket launches with you, pal, and maybe a couple of Bell helicopters, a few M16s. You want to be walking around Nam with a 22 caliber head. <laughs> They're doing Rocky IV, Rocky and surprisingly, it's almost out. Stallone is going to play a fighter in this one. Oh. oh, stretch that acting instrument to the limit, huh? Well, you know what's interesting, though? I think, see, performers, performers like Stallone, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they They've opened up the acting profession to a lot of people who couldn't get into it before when speech was a major requirement. Uh, <laughs> now, I mean, now, now any cave dweller that can wield a tire iron in a public saloon is now a potential Academy Award candidate. You know, uh, you know uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was here about a month ago. He was a very nice guy. Oh, he is a nice guy. Very nice guy. guy. And, he, and he's marrying a lovely woman, this uh, oh, the, uh, Maria Shriver right. on uh, CBS nice Morning guy. News. Yes. Uh, yeah, she's He's terrific. marrying her on the Morning News? No, no. She, she's she's co-host of the Morning oh, News. Oh, I see. And they've just fit the marriage in, I guess, between them. That's right. I guess today's right. working couples yeah. really you have to make time where you can. Uh, uh, so now, now, uh, you, you were, know. We were supposed to go out to eat last night, and of course. Last night? No, I mean, last time I was here. That's right. Well, it didn't we, work out. I'm no, no. Sorry. You know who I went out with? No. I went with Seinfeld. Don't do that noise again. What is that? No, like, Let me hear it again. That's my face. You know Jerry Seinfeld. Do the noise again. No, no. That was the noise again. <laughs> 
Oh, now, what, is that, what does that noise signify? That what are we noise, talking about? That signifies disgust. Disgust. That's what it is. All right. One more time. Well, Seinfeld. No, let me hear it again. No, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> no, I refuse to do it again. <laughs> All right, you and Jerry Seinfeld, very funny comedian. Very funny comedian, but king of the yuppies. Uh, you know, you know, it's true. You know, Jerry, he can't go. I want to go for burgers and fries. He takes me to this stupid Japanese theme restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know those ones where the guys cut the meat for you? And they cook at your table and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. You feel like a prisoner in some bad World War II film, you know? <laughs> Another piece of steak, Yankee, bing! <laughs> <laughs> then they bring out the guy with the two knives. You ever see this guy? I mean, he's sitting there. He's bouncing my meat off the two air conditioning ducts. <laughs> when I saw a piece of my tenderloin ricochet off the urinal, that's it, pal. I'm yeah. out of there. I'm yeah. walking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like you had a prime mind. table. Uh, yeah, yeah, Richard Lewis will be here. You know, I love Richard. Yeah. Now, Richard is the funniest man. We, no. have, we have to do something about this. No. Oh, come on. Lewis always shows up in those Shelly Winters moo moos. Yeah, I know. He's very hip, very you know, hip. Stylish. Get, I don't know where he gets this stuff. We'll see what he wears tomorrow night. He, right. he bought this black jacket with fringe. He'll probably wear it. All right. What are we doing here? Do we have time for, oh, we don't have time for a what's your beef? You got a real quick what's your beef? Oh, We're no, later. I don't have what, somebody Something asked me, quick? what are you doing on the 29th? Oh, stop it with these plugs. Are you just going to plug are something now? These not plugs. I'm just going to show you that I was going to be at the Academy of Music Okay, in that's Philly enough. That's enough. Sacramento, the 27th. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll be back after station identification. Oh, yeah.